Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting. Hitting you up on the literal best of all days. Coming to you from the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California. It's holiday Hellboy on deck again. Last week, we hit it with that pre-highlight, that pre-shade style. And as promised on Twitch live over the course of two separate three-hour videos, I worked all these colors in by hand with a glazing technique. He's not done, he's still whip, but today here, Assuming you're on YouTube, you're going to catch a sneak peek of what we do over on Twitch. And if you are on Patreon, all you got to do is check the video library to find that content. We're going to start with dark, warm gray. This is that new acrylic line from Pro Acrylic, Manya Mahabis, and Creature Caster. I'm going to show you my wet palette. We put a little flow improver down, a little of this new gray down. I'm going to let the moisture of the wet palette introduce some water. But I'm also going to grab some of this flow improver. I'm going to show you just how thin we like to work. Now, I know we went real deep on Twitch, but I felt like you guys might need a little sneak peek here on how much fun we have over on Twitch. So I'm going to show you exactly how thin we work it, how smooth it's going to look, all by hand, no airbrush. So that's how thin we're going, guys. I'm going to just work this thin sheen of dirty paint water over the already electrically highlighted skull that we did with a quick airbrush workup. We're gonna do several thin coats, and the idea is these colors, this new hue is gonna be shifting the values that we already laid down with the airbrush to this no, new warmer palette. And we're gonna progress slowly toward our highlight colors, maybe add ivory and other various colors, but most of the highlighting will have already been done by that value painting. The cool thing about grays and whites and blacks is paints loves to stick to those colors. So as long as you work thin, and you work methodical, you try to create even strokes, try to make sure you're not going on like a wash. If you see there's a little bit too much moisture in your brush, you can always just dab it off a little bit and keep going. You'll be shocked how much pigment will stay in those bristles. And you can see after our first dry coat, we're going for a second pass. You see, I'm, I feel like it's loaded up too much with moisture. You saw me dab it off and I keep going. We're shifting it slightly to that warm scale. Because even though they're black and white right now, you could let that ride as a foot on the cool scale, but I want there to be a little bit of warmth to these skulls. We're doing some thin coats. It is super important when you're doing this trick, when you're glazing this thin, to let your coach dry 100% between steps, or else you risk basically ruining your model. You will start reactivating the previous layers, peel it up, it'll look like garbage. Bright Ivory, one of my favorite colors in the new Pro Acrylic line. We're gonna start mixing that in with our warm gray. And then we're gonna go real thin and we're gonna start addressing the highlights. So you can see, you know, he's got like a crown of his skulls a little brighter, ridge of his, his eyes and everything. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to attack those areas and maybe just kind of reduce our brush pressure toward the other areas to not transfer quite as much pigment to that region. You actually get a lot of variant. You get tons of wiggle room when you're working this thin. I mean, literally, you almost can't fuck up as long as you remember patience. It's actually a really simple way to paint and it takes just a little bit of practice to memorize how you like to load your brush but outside of that we should all be painting this way with our paintbrushes see now we're slowly introducing more more ivory to the top areas and then feathering it down his nose his cheekbones everything like that but we're still talking dirty paint water thin it looks like ivory when you put it on because it's wet and then as it dries you're gonna notice it's very subtle shift you can glaze with any, as many or as few coats as you want. I'm going to be doing many coats to try to get that clean transition. We're basically still using the value that we established with the airbrushing from the previous video, but I want there to be a smooth delineation between the ivories and the warm grays as we move toward those final highlights. Now, as we move forward in this video, I'm going to spend less and less time on the two skulls toward the bottom of his bag and almost all of our time on the skull that's like in the bag. So as you can see, right on the top there, we put a little glob of, of super wet ivory, and we're just kind of manipulating it, stippling, I talk about that all the time, very light brush pressure, we're just kind of dotting it in, feathering it out, you know, lighter and lighter brush pressure, we may even wipe our brush off as we go, real simple, see, getting real smooth results here, you see, here we go, we're dabbing it in, a little stippling technique, I'm actually going to dry my brush, or grab a little moisture, and we're going to spread it out with the moisture, from our wet palette and then we're just going to keep going dispersing it it's so thin it's ridiculous even though it looks like it's really aggressive it is not it is the thinnest sheet of paint possible and as it dries you will see it will take on the qualities of the warm layers underneath 
it will take on the qualities of the value that we established previously. Now here we go, we're gonna just keep making those highlights more and more dramatic and a little bit smaller, more reserved, a little bit more radial center mass of the skull. The lighting was already established, like I said, by the airbrush stage. So we're just kind of following that as a paint by numbers, stippling in the glaze. It is incredibly thin, but you can see these subtle shifts start to mean a lot as you go through the project. We're gonna bring on some highlights on the cheekbones and the eye cavity, the nose, and really start pumping it up. Now, it doesn't look like anything crazy right now because the rest of the stuff in his bag is not painted yet. But don't worry, on Twitch we'll paint all that stuff. Might even have something at the end of this video for you. So just keep going, cutting in those deets. Same thing here, you see? So stippling it in, kind of center mass, and just start feathering it out slowly. I'm gonna go grab a little bit more flow improver, wipe it off, and we're gonna use that to kind of disperse the edges and fuzz the border between the ivory and the warm gray to help moderate that aggressive transition and you can see how smooth that looks. Nowhere near done though. We're going for many thin coats. Once that dries, even though it looks super dramatic, it won't be because we're shifting it so slightly. We're gonna cut in some of the details here, of course, but like I said, paint when it's wet looks super vibrant and as it dries, it gets muted down and that is even more true with the glazing technique. More steps equal more shifts the hue will start looking the way you want it. Now about here is where we're gonna start working more on the one skull and leave these ones alone. Got a long video here for you today. I wanna to make sure we get all the steps done on getting these nice, clean, warm skulls glazed in with a pre-highlight technique. But it does look good. I do love the subtle nature of this glazing technique. We haven't flexed our glazing muscles in years with a paintbrush. And I'm committed on this project 100% paintbrush all day or day. So you see now we're feathering in a new glaze right on top, it's super easy. Just feathering it, light brush presser, a little bit of dabbing, a little stippling. We'll, we'll do a swipe when we need to, like on these little chisel edges right here. Cut them in, looking solid. And it's still a gray white skull, it's just on the warm gray side, which is what I love. Now ivory is money, absolutely love this color. Keep going. See, we're time lapsing. We let it dry. We're gonna add another glaze. Just keep highlighting the top of his skull right there. Feather it out. So we're gonna just deposit some of the liquid on our hand and just keep feathering that clean highlight. Look at that. Will you look at that? Looking thugnificent. The the movie magic lets us skip the minutes between dry time. <laughs> as we move forward there we go and as you go further and further down the project and you're doing less and less the dry time is actually pretty fast it's only in the beginning that it takes that's kind of annoying but now we're doing such small areas they dry very quick almost before we can even move on and there we go look at that shift when you hear people talking about their blending techniques this is hopefully what they mean because glazing is actually a really easy and effective technique for getting those blends with a paintbrush. Super solid, works really well in miniatures. I don't really like wet blending. I don't think it's a realistic miniature painting technique. I mean, I know some people are super good at it, but I feel like the technique of stippling and glazing will get you there for very little uh, risk and it'll look just as good. And all really glazing with a paintbrush is, is the same thing as an airbrush. Airbrushing is just glazing by nature. The airbrush uses transparent sheets of paint layered over each other until it's done. We're just doing what the airbrush does, but with a paintbrush right now. Here we go, let's, let's cut in some of these details. You know, when we cut in these details, we use a little bit less moisture, a little bit more pigment, so we can get those hard edges to pop as the light hits those sharp features on the cheekbones. And the brow ridge has got like a little, you know, angle on the side of the skull we're going to trace. Make it look its best. Solid little skull right there. Loving this guy. Mm. There we go. Let's do one more right here on the top. Decided it wasn't bright enough. Look at that. Stipple it in. Feather out the edges. Fuzz that border. Leave a little 
little bit of the shadow behind. There we go. Pretty easy when you're working thin. And these new pro acrylics will fill gaps in your game. They'll cover it. They'll cover you. Like I'm not the master of this technique, but I feel like these paints are making it a little bit easier. <laughs> so there we go. That skull is looking hot. But hey, I feel like we can do more. So let's just add a couple more sl slashes. Make sure it looks. It look. Make sure it looks good. Mm mm mm. Crispy. Oh wait. Apparently, I felt like it wasn't enough. As I narrate this video, I realized, oh goddamn maniac. <laughs> let's do another one, even smaller. Let's feather that in. Did I lick my brush? What am I doing? I never do that. Feather it down. Get that border fuzzed out. Transfer it to those cheekbones. Keep it going. Like I said, you can do as many coats as you want because when you're glazing, it don't matter. I've got a cultist I use in my private painting classes. It's been painted 18 times. There it is. Skull looks crazy good. But hey, why don't we grab some black? Grab a little detail brush. Why don't we just draw a quick little crack in the skull? Huh? Maybe grab a little bit of ivory. Maybe draw a little under highlight on that crack. I mean, we may have done videos on realistic battle damage. You can search here on our YouTube channel or on Patreon. But we just use the same fundamentals of all of our chipping and crack tutorials to create a really a nice little realistic uh, scratch mark. We're going to add some crisp little highlights down there at the base to make him look his best. But like I said, the skull looks a little, you know, lonely there. This nice little chill-ass warm skull with all this gray... Uh, pre-highlighted toys in his sack you know and I filmed this video and I you know I hurt myself recently I wasn't I was feeling kind of out of it and then uh, you know to reward myself I played Fallout until 5 in the morning so I didn't get my voice overdone and then we uh, went live on Twitch and I painted all the toys and now you can see he's got all his little buddies so guys check us out on Twitch if you want to be a part of the action anyway play on play as If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.